This is a certified hood classic. I bet when you watched that Gillette ad four years ago, you felt disgusted, frustrated, and confused as to why the producers of that ad, a freaking razor company which caters to men, would completely misunderstand what it meant to be a man. And then you went to the dislikes and likes ratio and you realized you weren't alone in your frustration. You saw that there was a lot of more dislikes than there was likes. The ratio was something like 10 to one. So you realized that you weren't alone in your hatred and disgust at that ad and that gave you a sense of calm because you realized you weren't the crazy one the company the mega corporation procter and gamble who came up with that ad they were the ones at fault and you along with all the other people who disliked that message were at least together in your disapproval of that message but now that ad is gone and the whole dislikes to likes ratio on all videos is gone of course, this is not news. It's been four years, something like that, since the likes to dislikes ratio was removed. You're going to find out why that really happened and lots more besides. You're going to learn the basics of psychological operations or psyops. Also, you might learn how to make some salmon. So that's what I'm going to do today. Make some salmon and teach you about psychological operations. So first thing, the Gillette ad was a psyop. The ad did not try to sell you anything. They weren't trying to sell razors with that ad. They were trying to bring about a cultural shift using that ad. And of course, it was a failed PSYOP. The PSYOP was fucking terribly designed. It was stupid and it convinced nobody. So it was a failed PSYOP. It was too blatant. It was too on the nose. But that's not usual. If a PSYOP is well designed, you won't even know it's a PSYOP. So the first type of PSYOP is what I call the ham-fisted approach. You know, the dumb approach where the corporations just try to throw shit out on the media and hope that people are convinced by them. That's not the good way you do PSYOP. The second kind of PSYOP is the iron fist PSYOP. That is what YouTube did when it removed the dislikes to likes ratio. Everybody hated it, everybody understood the importance of that ratio, but you couldn't really do anything about it. So that PSYOP worked. But anyway, we're, we're going way too fast. Let me slow down, make some salmon. And yeah, I know, I know the salmon's wrapped in plastic. I told the guy the, not to put it in plastic, but I guess he didn't want to listen. So let me turn this thing on. There we go, got some heat. Okay, so first thing I want you to understand, PSYOP is not some kind of internet term or like some Reddit term. No, psychological operations is a real thing. In fact, the US Army has a whole branch called psychological operations. Like you can literally go and be trained as a psychological operations expert in the US Army. That's a real thing. Psychological operations have been a part of warfare for the longest time. I will teach you what I know about the topic and I need to get started on making this thing. You need my, I need my olive oil. All right, got my olive oil. There it is. And you might be thinking, why am I cooking outdoors today? Well, I ask you, why are you cooking indoors today? <laughs> this is a beautiful day. I don't see why I would be indoors. So this is salmon, a fatty fish, contains a lot of fat, which I like, tastes great, has a lot of protein. Here's some olive oil, another source of healthy fats because it is a mono unsaturated, that's right, it's a mono unsaturated fat which I'm fine with. I'm cooking with a cast iron pan, which is of course the traditional and correct and aesthetically pleasing way to cook anything. Let's look more closely at the YouTube removing the dislikes button, or rather I should say the dislikes ratio. Why did they do that? They say, and we don't believe them obviously, they say that they wanted to help all creators with their mental health. Bullshit. They say that they wanted to make YouTube a more safe and welcoming place for new creators so that they would not be attacked by bullies who would dislike their videos. Absolute bullshit. No small creators are saying they want to be protected by dislikes. That's not a thing. That was bullshit from the start. Everybody knew it. But think actually what's going on. Who are they actually protecting? They're protecting not small creators, but rather some very big and unpopular creators. First, the corporations, the mega corporations who put out stupid ads and have bad messaging and they don't want to be dislike bombed and made fun of. Like Procter & Gamble with their Gillette ad is one easy example. Everybody hated that ad and probably their PR team realized how damaging it was. But that's one, just one example. Then we have Pepsi. And you know how Pepsi made that stupid ad with Kylie Jenner. And I believe Kylie Jenner was, you know, waltzing around during a protest and the whole ad was just stupid. Here's your salmon. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. There we go. Got some heat. Let me put this away. And then we continue talking about PSYOPs. 
Oh, this is a big piece of salmon. I didn't want that big a piece. The bigger the piece, it's harder to cook, but that's fine. More bigger the piece, more nutrition, right? So I'm okay with that. You want to actually start on the skin side. So I'm gonna flip it. Ooh, yes. The skin side first, get the skin going. It's gonna become nice and crunchy. Always get the salmon with the skin. It just tastes better, in my personal opinion, of course. First rule of evaluating PSYOPs is you always look at the government or corporation's actions rather than their words. Because words are wind. And you never want to evaluate a corporation or government activity by what they say. This is also true for individuals. You know, if a girl says she wants to go on a date, but she always makes excuses, she's not into you, bro. I mean, even guy friends, like, if they're always not let you be a part of their friend group or whatever it is it's not your group they don't care about you so you always evaluate by the actions rather than the words because words are win words are cheap you can say whatever the fuck you want but when it comes to acting that's when you have skin in the game skin in the game a great book by nasim nicholas taleb you should read it the reason i know youtube doesn't give a shit about small creators is they run ads on small creators youtube videos and don't pay them a dime that's right. And you don't have the ability to turn them off either. If you're an unmonetized channel, meaning if you have less than 1,000 subscribers and you don't have 4,000 watch hours, YouTube is still running ads on your videos, whether you like it or not, and you don't have the permission to turn those ads off. And you want to tell me that YouTube cares about small creators? Absolute bullshit. But anyway, going back to what actions are, like I said, actions speak louder than words, right? What are the actual actions YouTube performed? Who are they actually protecting? First, they're protecting degenerate, filth music videos like freaking Nicki Minaj and Cardi B and all that garbage music it's more pornographic than it is actually music they protect that that shit is not censored even kids can watch that shit and, I, and YouTube has no problem with it because there's money to be made and at the end of the day it's about the money boys it's always been about the money that's one thing the second thing YouTube protects legacy media news CNN, MSNBC, even Fox News to some extent. YouTube protects these big so-called credible news sources and they put out you know, garbage news half the time. They divide us as a nation, they divide us as a society and that's the shit which they want to protect for reasons which go beyond me. Well, I, can, I have my suspicions but I'm not going to go into that in this video. But either case, legacy news medias is what they're protecting. And then they're protecting, of course, your White House. The White House produced some videos, which I'm not going to mention which ones, which got massive dislikes to right likes ratio. And of course, eventually they removed that ratio. You can't see the ratio anymore. So if you disapprove of something the government does or something a big corporation does, you will be made to feel alone. I want you to understand this very carefully. At the surface level, everybody knows that YouTube is not, doesn't care about the small creators and they care about the big money interests and the government. Everybody knows that. That's not news. That's not what the point of this video is. The point of this video is the reason why they did it is so that you feel alone in your frustration and your disgust. Get this straight. So we all know that YouTube's on the side of the big advertising, big money, government, etc. That's fine. I, we know that. But the reason why they got rid of that ratio is so that when you hate something, when you dislike something, you don't have the support of others. You don't realize that you're not alone your frustration all you see is the number of likes you don't see the number of dislikes understand that carefully let me let me give an example uh, let's just go with the degenerate filth videos right like Nicki Minaj or, or some shit or even some and or some bad corporate video you can see how many people liked it but you aren't able to see how many people disliked it so if you dislike it you're alone you feel alone because you don't realize how many people actually have your back that's the actual psyop here that's the sinister and disgusting part of what YouTube did. But YouTube is just a stupid example. Like there's far more dangerous psyops out there, which I will try to deconstruct on this channel. But I want you to understand a lone wolf can be domesticated. That's why they want you alone. It's easier to subdue you if you think you're alone in your disgust of the stuff which big media, big corporations and big government does. So what's the proof of what I'm saying? Well, the proof is that the dislike button is still there. Think about this. For the first thing, as a creator on the back end of YouTube, I can actually see the number of dislikes. So they're not actually protecting my mental health, so to speak. But more importantly, they still have that dislike button out there. We can still hit it and still dislike a video. But two things. First, disliking a video does absolutely nothing. It does not change your YouTube recommendations. Many studies have shown this. The second thing, I as a creator can see the number of dislikes, but even that doesn't do anything. So why do they allow the dislike button to stay? They've removed the ratio, 
they could just keep the like button, but they have the dislike button too. The reason why they have this, well, I'll give you a study. There's a study done on mice or monkeys, I forget which, but they had a button in their cage. And when the monkey hit the button, it would get a treat. And then, you know, they let that run for a couple of weeks. And then they made it such that the treat would fall randomly when the button was hit. So sometimes when the button was hit, the treat would fall. And sometimes when the button was hit, the treat wouldn't fall. And sometimes the treat would fall regardless of the button was pressed or not. But the monkeys never stopped pressing the button. For weeks and weeks, they still pressed the button because they felt that hitting the button increased their chances of getting the treat. They thought that there was a cause and effect. They thought that they were responsible. They thought that they had power over their situation, which wasn't the case. It was random. That is what the dislike button is. You are a monkey hitting a button which doesn't do anything. Like I said in the starting of this video, there's three types of PSYOP. First, the clumsy, ham-fisted PSYOP like the Gillette ad, which doesn't go anywhere, doesn't do anything. Second is the iron fist PSYOP, like what YouTube did. We knew what was going on, but we couldn't do anything about it because YouTube owns YouTube, you know, or rather I should say Google owns YouTube. There's a third type of PSYOP, the most successful type of PSYOP, the PSYOP that you don't even know is going on or at least the vast majority of people don't know what's going on. And this is the sinister stuff. This is the stuff which might get me in trouble, maybe. I'll give you some easy examples. The sugar industry literally paid off Harvard professors and scientists to say that sugar was good, or rather I should say carbs were good and fats were bad. This is not some Reddit conspiracy theory. This literally happened. It's documented by the Harvard department themselves. They themselves owned up to the fact that they were paid off by the sugar lobby. So they created this PSYOP saying that scientifically proving that carbs were better than fat. That was the ultimate PSYOP. The food pyramid was a PSYOP. It was a PSYOP backed by the government. Probably more people died because of the food pyramid and the, and the lies around the food pyramid than the actual, well, the possible viral contamination which spread across the globe and may or may not have come from any East Asian country. That one. I would suggest that the food pyramid killed more people than that which I just mentioned. So what are some other examples of the velvet glove psyop? So there's the ham-fisted psyop, there's the iron fist psyop, and there's the velvet glove psyop, where you don't even realize a psyop is going on. I'll give you some more examples. TikTok is one of them. Have you ever seen the Chinese version of TikTok? I have a Chinese friend and I saw his version of TikTok. It's actually not bad. Like the content on there is is wholesome. I don't want to forget my, my salmon. So how do you know your salmon's done? You can just prod it like this and you see how it's all pink inside. That means it's not done yet. And by the way, since I'm making this for myself and not for some fancy restaurant, I will happily break my salmon apart. I don't care. This is just for my nutrition and health and taste. Anyway, coming back to freaking psyops, right? So TikTok. I mean, this is also a known psyop. You, like you and me, we know that TikTok is a psyop, right? It's, it's basically Ch Chinese government owns the freaking platform. So they push out degenerate filth on Western versions of TikTok while they maintain the traditional and you know, social supporting aspects on their own TikTok, which is also a PSYOP. So basically, the Chinese government, they want pro-social behaviors in China, right? So their TikTok promotes that kind of behavior. That's a PSYOP. On the other hand, we in the West, we're freaking dumb, immoral, and absolutely untraditional. So when, when we have TikTok, all we see is degenerate shit and that prompts our behavior to be more degenerate. But fine, fine you say, that's, that's just a boring example of PSYOP. That's fine, everybody knows it. I'll give you another one. Why do we have fluoride in our water? It's for our teeth, right? Are you still sure about that? Well, I'm not so sure. And perhaps I'll make a video about this. If you want that video, type down fluoride in a comment below so I know there's interest. And then there's the trans fats. So, have you ever seen a tub of margarine? It literally says, it's not butter, it's margarine. As though that's a good thing. And people believed it was a good thing for the longest time because scientists were paid off by the oil lobby, the seed oil lobby, I should say, to say that trans fats were healthy for you, which is garbage. Trans fats are horrible for you. But no. And you know how trans fats are created? They literally treat seed oils, which are kind of toxic on their own, with, with hexane. And hexane is, it's a, it's a toxin. So this thing, this dove, runs on butane or propane, I'm not sure. Hexane is very similar to butane and propane in, in terms of chemical structure. They use that to treat a food product and then they oxidize it and pressurize it and you create trans fat. And they managed to convince the entire US public and the world's public that trans fats were actually healthy for you. And then today, the current trend is that polyunsaturated fatty acids, so PUFA, PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids, 
like canola oil, all seed oils basically, they say that they're good for you. American Heart Association is completely funded by the seed oil lobby. Of course, the American Heart Association is going to say that seed oils are good for you. They're funded by the seed oils. That's an example of a velvet glove psyop. The general public has no idea that seed oils are bad for them. Every restaurant uses seed oils. But anyway, that's a different topic and I'll go into the topic of seed oils in a different video. If you want that video, comment down in this freaking comment section, seed oils, so I know that there's interest in that topic. So how do you protect yourself from psyops? That's the question, right? What's the actionable steps? Well, I'll tell you. First thing, stop watching the news. Freaking pointless. The news of today is just propaganda. Depending on who runs the news channel, it's divisive, it's useless, it's emotionally manipulative, it's utter garbage. It's all done for the sake of keeping you passive and panicked and makes you feel that you don't have control over your own destiny. That's the point of news nowadays. I think it's utter waste of time to watch the news or even read the news at this point. If you have knowledge but you don't have power to act on it, it's useless. I actually got that concept from The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, which is another book I would strongly recommend. You see, it used to be the case that you are the sum of the five closest people to you. It's now becoming the case that you are the sum of the five influencers that you follow the most. So I would suggest choose five to ten influencers, you know, YouTubers, whatever you want, and then unsubscribe from everybody else. Turn on the bell button for those five to ten creators. It doesn't have to be me, could be whoever you choose. And then only go to YouTube to watch the videos from those select, select, select YouTubers. That way you're not being bombarded by information that you can't use. You're getting information from sources that you trust and you aren't being emotionally manipulated like the mainstream media does. That's your way to avoid all these psyops. But that's not enough because you still need information. So in my upcoming seed oil video, which I do want to make that video, I'm going to explain how I evaluate what's true. So science, I'm a scientist, so I understand how that sausage is made. You know, I understand the scientific community, how peer review works, all that stuff. Science is a tool. It's a very, very powerful and effective tool at coming to the truth, but it has its flaws. And it's only one tool in my arsenal of finding out what is true. So that's science. I also rely on philosophy. I also rely on my instinct. I also rely on personal observation of fact. But anyway, I don't want to go into that in this video. In my seed oil video, if, you know, if, if there's enough interest in it, I will go into how I evaluate what is true, going with the science, but also adding other elements to make sure that the science is not misleading me. And anyway, knowledge is useless unless you have the power to change your destiny. And power is your connections and how much money you have. Many other things too, but connections and money are two of the big ones. And that's one of the reasons I have created this YouTube channel. I want to make more money and I want to have amazing connections with people who also have power and money. I've made connections with, with some amazing guys through my YouTube coaching service. If you want to know anything about that, check the link in the description below. But coming back to this salmon, so what's going on here? You see the fats rendering out, that's completely normal. I would actually want to increase the heat, but oh, I didn't realize it. But the fire had gone out because of the wind, so that's why it's not done. Well, my bad. So that's it's fine though. It's just a piece of fish. It'll cook. I need to actually make this fish now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to place this here to protect against the wind. Some of you might thinking I ruined my salmon because I shredded it like this. Not at all. I actually want every part of the salmon to get some heat so that I'm, I'm sure it's fully cooked. I'm not one of the guys who likes my salmon slightly raw. I don't trust it. Fish do have parasites in them sometimes. So I do genuinely want every single piece of my fish to feel the heat before I eat it. It's just my concern. I never eat sushi, because sushi literally has parasites in it sometimes. Worms, like people who eat a lot of sushi, they literally have worms in their intestines. I do not eat sushi for that reason. And when I'm cooking fish like I am right now, I make sure that I'm cooking it all the way through. I don't give a single fuck how it looks or how the presentation is. I'm not cooking it for a restaurant, I'm cooking it for myself. And these are the standards which make me happy, make me contented. So that's what I'm going to go with. That's what cooking is all about. Cooking is about preparing nutritious meals that you enjoy, you and your friends and family enjoy. It's not about how the food looks like in the end. And also I should say, fish, right? Is fish healthy? Especially from a testosterone and hormonal point of view. You see, I have some bad news for you on this, on this aspect. Fish is a very, very healthy meal for most of human history. Fish has a lot of healthy fats, omega-3s, I'm sure you already know. And salmon especially 
It was fantastic food until today, until the modern industrial era, until the age of plastic. Because you see, all the fertilizer runoff goes into the rivers, goes into the lakes, goes into the oceans. All the microplastics, plastics, endocrine disruptors, all of it goes into the lakes, rivers, and oceans. And the poor fish, they consume these, it builds up in their bodies, and they actually have serious reproductive health issues because of these endocrine disruptions. So fish are literally born with male and female reproductive organs. So they aren't able to reproduce. It happens all the time and it happens across the globe. It's really messed up what's happening to our marine ecosystems. So when we catch those fish and eat them, you know, that's not really healthy for us most of the time. So this is fish. You might ask me, you know, if I say fish is unhealthy because it's polluted, why am I having fish? Well, two reasons. And also mercury. A lot of fish is polluted with mercury. Salmon is actually one of the better ones, so that's why I chose salmon. But even then, going back to my question, if fish is so bad for you, why am I having fish, right? Well, one thing, I have fish very, very rarely, so I'm minimizing my exposure to the harmful chemicals present in most fish. The second thing is I don't want to live in fear. You see, this channel has never been about living in fear. It's about knowledge, it's about wisdom, it's about understanding the environment, understanding your food so that you can make your choices in an informed fashion. I know that this fish probably has some endocrine disrupting chemicals in it. However, this is the highest quality fish that I could possibly find. And it's wild caught, it's not factory farmed, it's really good salmon. So that minimizes my risk to some extent. The other thing is salmon has a lot of healthy fats which actually help me in my testosterone production. So to some extent, the endocrine disruption is actually outweighed by the healthy fats in this fish. So I understand the risks I'm taking understand the benefits of this fish and I do think it's okay to have high quality fish every now and then maybe you know once in two weeks or once in a week that's fine and that's the level of risk I recommend you take and again this channel has never been and my message has never been to live in fear of plastics and endocrine disruptors rather the goal has always been to be educated and to have the wisdom to understand with discernment to make your buying choices and eating choices more healthy. That is not the best looking meal, but I'm not optimizing for looks, I'm optimizing for taste. And what, what does it taste like? Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is salmon, stir fried, easiest possible food, Literally no ingredients, it's just the salmon. I added pepper and salt in the marinade. So yeah, I did marinate the salmon. So what you gotta do is take lemon juice, take your salmon filet, put it in a glass container, put lemon juice, put salt and pepper. And I didn't do this, my I asked my butcher to do it for me. So he made it happen. And here we are with an amazing plate of salmon. Cooked the way I like it and the skin though. The skin is the best part. I think I left my like fork and knife in the car so I'm gonna get, get it. Anyway, I had fun making this video. I think I was ranting a little bit, but that's fine. See you next one.